Hey everybody, this is GGB co-host Poppers, and let's get into College Basketball Upset of the Day. Friday edition, thanks to my one and a half points on Thursday. Thank you, Thursday. Uh, if this game goes the way that I expect it to today, uh, then uh, that I hope it goes at least, uh, then I automatically clinch a no-dare week. Again, if you think these rules are a little bit too easy for me to complete, I actually understand that point of view. Uh, and I'll be willing to change the rules, but again, someone got a comment at it, so that's a thing. Uh, but again, oh, well, let's go over the Thursday games real quick. Four o'clock, number seventeen, Oregon travel to Colorado, and this was the game I picked, but I honestly didn't think expected to hit. I thought Oregon was actually a good basketball team, and now I'm in this kind of mumbo jumbo limbo area where I don't know who the heck is good in the Pac-12. Like, if you asked me who I thought was going to win the Big Ten, I could give you an answer. I think, honestly, Iowa, if you were going to really ask me. Big 12, I could give you an answer. ACC, SEC, uh, even, like, the American, Big East, I could give you answers for all of these conferences. I could not give you an answer who I think is good in the Pac-12 or who I think is going to win the Pac-12. I honestly think it's a toss-up at this point. I mean, legitimately, no one team deserves to make it out of the Pac-12, and, like, I don't even think they deserve to make it with the rules require us to let one of them in, so it's an absolute garbage conference. I can't expect, I, I do not believe there's still one of these teams in the top 25, and there's only one from the American conference in the top 25, which is insane. I don't understand how Oregon got in instead of some other teams that I think are really good that deserve their way in instead of them. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's an absolute bad thing. It's horrible. It's it's not going well in the Pac-12. But uh, I, I'll save my Pac-12 rants for some other time. Indiana traveled to number 8, Wisconsin. I expected this to be a close game. Not expected this to get this close. Indiana took Wisconsin to double overtime. Double overtime. Uh, Wisconsin's beaten Indiana the last 17 times they've played at Wisconsin. Make that 18, because Wisconsin was able to pull it out today against Indiana. Indiana's really good. I'm not going to attack Archie Miller in that squad at all. They played a hell of a game. Uh, but it just turns out that Jack Trice guy is legitimately just going to lift Wisconsin to victory. That was such an amazing game by him. He's legitimately one of the best t players in the Big Ten. Maybe the second best behind Luca Garza. It's amazing what that guy can do, but... Uh, I mean, there's nothing bad to say about Indiana here. Number five, Iowa traveled to Maryland. Uh, Maryland was at six and five, kind of needed this game to stay at five, above 500. They did not get it. Uh, Iowa moves to 10 and two with only one loss in conference. That was an overtime loss to Minnesota, which Minnesota's looking pretty good this year. That's not like a horrible loss. But Maryland sunk to six and six, and it's starting to look like they soon need a win if they want to stay in this playoff race. Uh, I don't know. Gar it, Luca Garza again have a phenomenal night. For Iowa, uh, I, I can't say much more about how much I love Iowa. I think Iowa's going to be the team to beat in the Big Ten, at least in my opinion. I think Michigan's also a great team, but let's be honest here. Iowa is going to be a tough one to beat moving on in the year. BYU traveled to number one Gonzaga. Again, this was a last-minute changeup, so I don't really punish BYU that much for not being able to beat number one Gonzaga on one-day notice. But uh, Gonzaga absolutely clobbered BYU. Uh, just absolutely destroyed them. This was a BYU squad that I thought was pretty decent heading into this game. <sighs> Man, they got crushed. Now I'm gonna not going to hold it against them too much. I mean, again, for the reason I stated before, it was one day notice. Didn't really have time to study the game film for Gonzaga, practice, you know, do any of the normal stuff you do before a basketball game. Uh, BYU got crushed. Gonzaga continues to just absolutely dominate their opponents. And it's, like, pretty much... Uh, I don't know. They have a chance to go undefeated this season, I think. It's going to be interesting. And then finally, at 11 o'clock, 8 o'clock, number 12, Illinois was traveling to Northwestern. Northwestern held the lead for quite a bit of this game. And it honestly looked like it might have gone, might be going Northwestern's way. But Illinois was just able to storm back and take it. And uh, Illinois won, which gives me a one and a half points because I picked the biggest upset of the day in Colorado beating Oregon. So... You know, and it was a good thing for me. I got one and a half points, bringing me to two points. Uh, so let's get into Friday. If you don't know, there's one game on Friday with a ranked team in it. One at six o'clock on FS1. Purdue seven and five. Purdue travels to number twenty three, Michigan State. Now Michigan State's just been tearing through two and zero in the last few games. Uh, two games. I mean, 
two and three, I believe, in Big Ten play this year. After starting out zero and three, they've actually looked pretty good recently. Uh, uh, not not dominating Nebraska as much as I thought they would, but ended up beating Minnesota by a considerable margin. Uh, now, Michigan State's a very good team. I'm not going to take that away from them. I think they have a chance to do something great this year. But uh, I have to pick an upset. In fact, this is the only game of the day. So Michigan State's only fair by four and a half for either reason. And this is because Purdue is normally very good. And I'm going to trust that the head coach of Purdue is going to get it together. Now, 7 and 5 record is not ideal, especially lost to Miami, who's not looking like a top tier ACC team, to say the very least. Uh, but Purdue has some pretty good, solid wins in there. They seem like they're getting better if you're watching them. Uh, I don't know, the Boilermakers, I think, are a pretty good Big Ten team. They Now, they need kind of need to string together some couple wins. Again, I, the season's not even close to have uh, over. Still have almost all of January, which is this month, February, to determine if you're going to be a good team or not, if you're going to be in the playoff picture. So, I mean, there's a lot of games left to play, but eh, yeah, I think this would be a great one to put on Purdue's resume. Uh, I think they're going to be able to pull it off. Give me Purdue to win. Hey, everybody, this is GGB co-host Puffer saying adios amigos and go Boilermakers. makers